Hello and welcome to our conversation today, titled How to Engage with Research at CMU via Capstone Projects. I'm Paul Pangaro, I'm Professor of the Practice in the Human Computer Interaction Institute, affectionately known as the HCII, which is part of the School of Computer Science here at Carnegie Mellon. And I'm joined today by my Enable co-lead, Andrew Lee of the Tepper School of Business. Here at CMU, School of Computer Science, along with Tepper, have created this initiative, Enable, so-called, a retail and services collaborative, with a mission to create more humane, efficient, and positive retail and service experiences. Uh, we feel that this is a unique forum for helping retail and service industry meet the needs of customers through advances in technology, yes, of course, but equally, we focus on advances in design, interaction design, service design, and organizational design, all of which are required to successfully adopt new technology. So we combine these areas of design and areas of technology into a single initiative. There's much more at our site. Please get in touch. If there are specific areas you're interested in, uh, the site is cmu.edu slash enable, E-N-A-I-B-L-E. So thanks everyone for coming. I wanna thank Zendesk for being sponsor of Enable. We appreciate it very much. And just a few logistics before we get going. The event is on the record and is being recorded. If you'd like to pose a question, there's a button at the bottom of your Zoom screen, uh, appropriately titled Q&A. Please post your question there and we'll put it in the queue for the open Q&A session after the opening presentations. And with that, I'll turn it over to my co-lead, Andrew Lee. Andrew is Assistant Professor of Operations Research at CMU's Tepper School. Uh, really excited to get going. Uh, you can see from the slide, besides me, we have a number of guest speakers with us here today. Uh, but just to make sure that we stay on schedule, I'm gonna defer their introductions uh, until later on. Uh, on a related note on, on timing, uh, I'm gonna apologize in advance right now to the audience, to our guest speakers. Uh, I'm gonna be kind of a drill sergeant today in terms of maintaining time here. And I apologize if it becomes up kind of a, a, a strict. Yeah, I just wanna make sure that we, we, we hit our, our 2.30 deadline. Um, so if you've attended any of our previous Enable sessions, right? We do a kind of a monthly series here. Uh, you'll know that we typically, in fact, every month up until now, we've, we've, we've dived into a particular area of interest, right? We did a uh, personalization, we did a customer experience. We did artificial intelligence in marketing. Um, our, our, our kind of last uh, 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 session for, the, for the, the, the school year is a bit different, uh, but it's different on purpose. It's to respond to a higher level question that we at Enable get all of the time, right? Which is uh, how can companies get directly involved with CMU in research or maybe more generally just in problem solving, right? This is probably our most common question. Uh, in theory, this process should be easy, right? Uh, at CMU, we have a bunch of folks who think a lot, or who care a lot about solving real world problems. Um, the kind of hypothetical audience member that I'm talking to right now is at such a company. Uh, 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 at a retail or a services company and deals with such real world problems. Uh, so it seems like there should be a path to kind of uh, connect these two groups. Okay. There are in fact two such paths uh, and my goal today is to dive into one of those two. We'll save the other one for another session probably next year. All right? Uh, and we picked this one on perfect. Uh, generally, this is the easier of the two. Okay. These are capstone projects. I'll tell you exactly what a capstone project is very soon. Um, but what we'll do is I'll speak just a tiny bit uh, uh, about capstone projects from kind of the, the view from 30,000 feet. Uh, and then the guest speakers that we've invited will, will uh, kind of teach by example. These are the heads of three different uh, programs that we have here uh, through which you can set up a capstone project. Uh, and, and we'll ask them to talk a bit more in depth. Okay. Um, so let me just start with, again, I'm speaking to the hypothetical audience member. You've got problems to solve, um, but maybe the, 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 you've kind of, the, the path to getting connected to a university is unclear, right? So what exactly is a capstone project? What exactly is a capstone? 
this is the one slide that I'm just going to read verbatim uh, because as it turns out when you bring a bunch of academics together and you ask them to define something, uh, it's, 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 it takes a while, but the result I think is fun, right? So a capstone project uh, brings a team of highly trained students to focus on sponsor, a sponsored defined project that results in an exploration of solutions and potentially a proof of concept or prototype. I purposely read this verbatim because this is in some ways the outline of my very uh, 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 brief, um, you know, capstone summary, right? Maybe the few key words to kind of uh, uh, zoom in on right now. Uh, a, this involves students. Okay, I said there were two paths to kind of connecting with, 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 with CMU in terms of your problems and, and our, our desire to solve problems, right? Uh, this is the, the, we'll call it the educational arm of it. Okay, so through all of this, you have to imagine that uh, uh, the bulk of the work is being done by students. So we put that word in red here. Uh, the other word in red, and there's gonna be much more discussion on this later on, right, is the notion of sponsored defined, right? Uh, in some ways, um, you, again, the, 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 this, 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 I'm abusing the word you, but you as in the audience, right, are coming with a kind of problem in mind. And we'll talk about what the right problems look like and what the solutions that come out look like. Okay, so this kind of sets up what I want to talk about. Um, this is, again, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy with this definition, uh, but maybe let's, let's get into to, to numbers. Let me just give you the, the, some hard numbers around all of this. Okay, so an actual capstone project, whatever that thing is, Right. What it looks like is it looks like something like two to the, two to five students, including one or more faculty advisors. That's the team kind of set up to work on this project. Okay, the project itself lasts less than a year, right? so like four to twelve months. Uh, and that third bullet says that the starting date varies across programs. I want to be clear here: there's a lot of variability in all of these numbers. Okay, but when we kind of zoom into a particular program, these are actually locked in. This is an important point to make. All right. Now that word program, maybe I should even, again, I'm, I'm speaking to somebody who's never even thought of capstones here, right? When I say program for now, I just mean, I mean you can think of it as masters in something. Would you just really think of it as is, it's a particular topic. Okay, a topic like business analytics, a topic like product management, a topic like human computer interaction. When I say program, that's how you should think of it as a, a specialty, if you want. Okay. And when we see ranges like four to 12 months, two to five students, uh, starting date varies across programs. Uh, I want to be clear when you zoom in on into a particular specialty, it's actually, this is, there's not variable. Right. This is just to express the diversity of the programs that we have here at CMU. Uh, more on that soon. Okay, and then finally the price, uh, something like ranging from 10,000 to 85,000. And pause here for a second. Again, I don't wanna, there's a lot of information coming at once, particularly if you've just never thought about capstones at all. Okay, one other uh, kind of point maybe to, that's worth clarifying, this comes up. Uh, again, this is our, this is, we, we are, we are enabled putting on this event. Uh, you know, we at Enable don't run a, we don't have a capstone, it's not an Enable capstone, right? At Enable, we, we as, as kind of this community of academics and industry partners, um, I mean, from the academic side, what we like to do is we like to connect our industry partners to the research going on here at CMU. Okay, that's the, that, that bridge is kind of what this is about. Uh, one of the fun exercises we did in kind of setting up this presentation uh, is we said, okay, let's kind of look across CMU. Uh, very often we make recommendations, right? Say, you know, uh, uh, we'll talk to a company, they'll propose a problem. And say maybe this is the, 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 the capstone program that you want to look at. Uh, we kind of said uh, in setting up this presentation, why don't we zoom out for a second? and at least make a list of all of the options that might be of interest to, 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 to the Enable community, right? To the folks that are thinking about 
AI in the context of, 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 of retail or services. Um, that turned out to be a larger task than we thought, but the, the end result, right, kind of kind of gave us a landscape of what's what's going on at CMU. Uh, and it's large. All right, so we're counting right now at least 18 different capstone programs, different specialties, educational programs, if you want, right, that have capstones. If you're looking at that first bullet, I have in parentheses more details available after today. That's a real promise. We actually have set up a, a very nice document for you to check out, right? It's got all uh, 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 it's got it's got not every single capstone at CMU, but the ones that we think might be relevant to 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 uh, the community here. Okay, and, and kind of comparing contrasting on the dimensions that we just had. Um, for now, all I want to express is that uh, the 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 kind of specialties covered, the 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 range of specialties covered is broad. Okay, in the in the very last in the three last bullets here, I put a subset of the topics that isn't even uh, it's not even close to covering everything. Okay, the ones that I've highlighted in red: business analytics, product management, human computer interaction. Uh, these three in particular, right? The way today's presentation is set up, we're actually going to hear from the heads of those three programs. Right, a very kind of diverse set of programs. Uh, 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 and they'll kind of fill in the the they'll 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 fill in the blanks and frankly have more expertise than me on all of this um, uh, and correct anything that I've said wrong. But where we're at right now is I hope you know again a lot of information at once. For now, you're at a company, you've got many problems that you're thinking about, right? I, the capstone project is kind of the uh, if we can summarize it quickly. It feels like the short term relatively inexpensive, uh, and in particular, highly specialized, according to this slide, option for you. Okay. This is nearly the moment to dive in, but I'm gonna kind of, if you'll indulge me, I'm gonna try to give as best I can, I'll stay at a high level before we dive in. Right, I wanna kind of cover two things that I think are useful because I, what I want for you is that you kind of, you, 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 this presentation ends and you start thinking about, hey, what are the problems that I'm actually dealing with that might map properly to a capstone project? Or what are the problems that I'm dealing with that don't map properly, right? I, I wanna kind of enable that, that uh, decision, okay? So give me, give, me, give me five more minutes of high level. Okay. At a high level, I think one thing that, and again, now that you're looking at the slide, you can understand how difficult high level is uh, given the diversity of subjects. Uh, but I think the, the, the number one question that we at Enable actually try to pose back, right, to the companies that we're talking to, right, and thinking about capstones is, you know, do you have the right project? That's an extremely loaded question. Do you have the right project? Or maybe I should say, do you have the right problem? Uh, it's extremely loaded. And in some ways that theme will run through all of today. Um, in defining that question, let me just say that, you know, what's expected from a company, you know, at, at kind of the, the starting line of a capstone project, why don't we start there and then we can discuss you know, how we get there, right? What's expected at the starting line from the, the company or the sponsor, right, going into, from, from you basically, going into the, the, the capstone project, right, is uh, these first three bullets, a well-defined problem statement. I call that the main kind of a, a, a expectation uh, uh, from the company side. Then a dedicated sponsor contact, right, that, that, that means just somebody that, that students and our faculty advisor can talk to and then uh, access to data and that just means that months are not wasted cleaning and anonymizing data but at that first point right the well-defined problem statement as it turns out that ends up being kind of the 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 main uh i don't want to say bottleneck but that the, the, the from 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 the comp from the company's side that ends up being um i think the the biggest uh, uh, uh the biggest hurdle to jump for diving, uh, for uh, uh, running into a, a, a capstone project. And to be clear, we're aware of this, right? Uh, and in fact, uh, 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 some of our programs uh, to, to, 
there's some variability there, but many of our programs are, are, are not only aware of this, but have dedicated resources to dealing with this, right? Which is to say the moment you engage with some of these programs, actually to be fair, the moment you engage with any of these programs, a dialogue begins, right? On establishing what is a proper problem and what is a problem statement look like. Right, so it would be unfair of me to say that you kind of this this is the expectation from you, and you submit an application. And that that's not what happens. Right, instead you kind of express interest, and we 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 programs here kind of uh, have the resources to convert an idea into this 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 well defined problem statement. Okay, I think you back up for a for, for, for a second though, right? I, I think actually uh, 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 again. Higher level, you're you're just thinking you're 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 thinking what what do do I'm at a company? Do we have any problems that even kind of generally fit this bill? Right. I want to make sure that you can leave today with some tools, right, to think about that question. That's where I think the right way the right way to talk about you know what is the quote unquote right project or what is a good project. I think we want to work backwards. And what I mean by that is, let's just talk briefly about what good projects, what are the outcomes of successful projects? This I find to be the best kind of thought experience, right? If you can understand what the, 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 the proper outcome or what a, what are, what's a typical outcome of a good project, then you can kind of work backwards and ask, you know, do, 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 do I have the right question? Right, and this kind of goes back to the, those last bullets that I had on my first slide, right? Successful projects end up delivering an evaluation of a diverse set of solutions and potentially a prototype or proof of concept. Right. Now, those are meaningful words in, 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 in you know, the context that you're sitting in there. Uh, if you'll kind of allow me, I'll, I'll give kind of one example that I'm purposely, selfishly drawing just from my own experience, right? I think a lot about recommender systems. Right, and so a, a, a fair a fair expectation of a project, right, is uh, you know we're talking to a small new online retailer. They would like to put in a a, a recommended system for their relatively small set of products. A fair expectation is that a capstone project will kind of try out the various types of recommended systems, and there are many. Right, we'll try kind of try out the different types and make a a suggestion on what is the, the, the kind of right path, uh, uh, what is the right uh, direction to go. A kind of unfair expectation would be to say that those two to five students uh, deliver a recommender system to be implemented today. Just an example, uh, my, uh, our guests have better examples. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that ends up being, again, this ends up being the main issue. We're gonna to continue to not just touch on this, but this theme will kind of run through all of today. Uh, finally, I do wanna kind of rapidly go through what are the, I call them frequently asked questions. These are just things I wanna make sure, uh, again, when you, when, you, when you go back home to, your, to your, your home company, right? And you're thinking about this option, these capstones, right? What are the things that you think are gonna be the roadblocks and are not? What are the things that are not roadblocks that are going to become roadblocks, right? This is very quickly. Uh, the main three questions we get are one confidentiality i would say that is not a roadblock um i can't it's hard to give blanket statements but that in my experience is not really a, a big issue the, the kind of boiler but the boilerplate agreement that gets signed is fairly uh, uh fairly advantageous to the, to the company number two is intellectual property this is the fun part this is education and our students do own that intellectual property that is uh, basically a non-negotiable with our paths to acquiring that, licensing that, right? We're, we're aware of those difficulties. And finally, continuation is probably the number one question we get. Continuation as in, well, you know, you, you emphasize this calendar time, this locked in sort of student calendar, what happens when that's over? Um, it is true that when the project, when the project is over, the project is over. But uh, again, we're aware of this and there's many options to kind of you know, uh, 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 either continue 
working with those students or, or, or transitioning to either another capstone or the other, the, 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 the other path to research. Um, that's enough for me. Again, high level, I, I don't think teaches particularly well. Uh, I want to dive into kind of uh, 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 the guests that we, we brought in. Uh, my first guest, uh, Alan Montgomery is a professor of marketing at the Tepper School of Business, uh, but, but more importantly for today is a uh, heads up our Masters of Business Analytics. Um, Alan. So I'll just be more specific in thinking about an instance of uh, educational projects. I, I, I go back and I uh, just echo some of the things that Andrew has been saying. Uh, one of the big reasons that we do these projects is to give students hands-on experience. I, companies have problems, students have skills, and this is meant to be a great educational experience for them. Uh, it's also meant to give the sponsors something as well. Uh, Andrew mentioned a few that there can be interactions with students uh, and you get a practical solution. What I usually find is that the reason that you want to do these projects is you have a problem that you just don't have the resources in house because there's timing constraints or um, there's capacity constraints. Uh, it, it, it's one of those things that it would be great if we could do this, but we just don't have it right now. Uh, so first, let me talk about the MSBA program and how it fits together with what I'm talking about here. Uh, the MSBA program is about uh, um, training students to uh, master business analytics. Uh, so business analytics is a relatively new area. It's this um, intersection between business and data science, uh, operations and statistics. There's programming that's involved. So in terms of what the students learn in our program, uh, th there are uh, four elements that are mentioned here. Uh, we talk about analytics. So they take courses in machine learning and optimization. They're also taking courses on software engineering. So they're competent in programming in R and Python. But besides that, there's a lot of other things that they need to master to be effective in business analytics. So that means things like Tableau, visualization software, graphics libraries, database manipulation, uh, managing large databases. Uh, then there's also another element, uh, which is business domain knowledge. So oftentimes the problems that pop up will be marketing or operations, accounting, finance, people analytics. So any or all of these problems are good. And the last one that I would mention about the program is that it's not just about the data science, it's trying to get the data science implemented into the organization. Uh, so usually that means that you have to present technical results to non-technical managers or stakeholders. Uh, I actually find that this is one of the, the hardest and most rewarding elements of the program. Uh, you think it's really clear uh, about what the optimization or what the algorithm is meant to do, but then when you start talking with the company, you realize that, no, 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 that's not really what they wanted. Uh, so communicating and working in teams are skills that are developed and hopefully honed. And one of the purposes of the project, again, is to give students that experience of let me reach outside of my comfort zone and let me start thinking about how I'm going to tackle this problem. Okay, so again, the MSBA is an online program. It runs over 18 months. Our students tend to be professionals with a median of four to five years of work experience. Some have more. Uh, some are 10 to 20 years out and some have less. Some are like one to two years out. Uh, but uh, for the most part, just think of our students as professionals. Many are working in roles as data scientists in their companies, uh, or they have some practical experience and knowledge. Uh, Andrew, let's go to the next slide. And then the next step, instead of just telling you about the program, is to tell you a little more about the capstone project itself. And uh, as Andrew pointed out, everyone's going to do the capstone projects a little differently. But the common theme in all of these is that they're meant to give a real life experience. In our case, it's a real life experience in solving an analytics problem. Uh, so 
in business analytics, we have a business problem, we have data, we have methods, and the goal is to try to solve the business problem using the method applied to the data. Sometimes the data is not in a good form. Uh, so part of the project could be to process and transform the data. Other times you may not know what the method is, uh, but you need to have all three of those elements to have what I think of as an excellent business analytics capstone project. Uh, so your role as a sponsor is to find a business problem that you have. And I'll give you some examples in just a minute, but uh, it could be an inventory management problem. So you um, have customers that are arriving. You don't know what the demand is going to be in a month from now. You don't know what the demand is going to be a year from now, but you want to try to use the past experience to try to predict what the future is going to look like. All right, so the sponsor defines the business problem, and then you also provide the data set. Uh, so upfront, those are the uh, an initial asks that we have of the sponsors. The sponsor is also going to find a stakeholder at the organization that's going to work with the team. So this is not meant to be here, hand off the data, and four months from now, tell me what you've come up with. Uh, we want the sponsor to be engaged with the team to help guide the team uh, to ensure that you reach the right point. The, the other purpose is that the students are going to have questions about the business and about the data set. So we want to um, have your involvement as you go through. Now, this is not meant to be a daily task of meeting with students. Uh, usually we try to set up a weekly or a bi-weekly meeting. I, so I try to be cognizant of the amount of time that the sponsor wants to put in and how much time the students are going to be able to put in. But imagine that you have um, four really talented students uh, and they're each going to put in, say, 10 hours. So that gives you effectively one man week. Uh, multiply this out times the 14 weeks and you realize that you've got some substantial resources that are going to be brought to bear on trying to solve your problem. Okay, uh, sometimes you wanna have more than one person involved in the project, uh, and that's fine. Uh, oftentimes you'll have several stakeholders. Uh, the students will communicate with you um, at the kickoff meeting. There will also be a formal midterm presentation as well as a final presentation. So we have a few milestone, milestones. And again, each of the projects are a little different in trying to make sure that you hit milestones. The other thing I would mention is that there's a faculty advisor. Uh, so what the role of the faculty advisor is to give advice, uh, both to the team as well as the sponsor to try to come up with the best solution that's possible uh, given the resources and the data that is available. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, the team is not just trying to um, do the data science, but it's trying to carry it through and think about prescribing solutions. Uh, and again, it depends upon the type of problems you have. Uh, sometimes it's um, a, 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 a practical marketing orientation about what's the right price, or other times it's a production problem of trying to come up with an algorithm that could be used in the future. Okay. So that tells you a little about the program and the capstone. Let me give you some illustrations of capstone projects that we've completed this past year. Um, Andrew, if you'd uh, advance to the next slide, I've got a list. I don't think I have enough time to go through all of them. Uh, and one minute. I've, uh, all right, so I've got enough time to go through one. So uh, uh, let me pick out, uh, uh, one about uh, reducing costs for the last mile delivery. Uh, so this was a fun project. Uh, a consulting service is working in tandem with a parcel delivery service. They come to us and say, look, we're at capacity, we're stressed out. COVID is forcing us to deliver more packages than ever. We'd like to try to figure out a way of reducing the um, uh, the cost and trying to increase our capacity. So one way to do this is to go to consumers and ask them to consolidate their deliveries. So in getting deliveries scattered throughout the week, what if we were to consolidate deliveries into a couple days each week? 
Surprisingly, consumers are actually pretty happy to do that. Uh, initially, we were thinking they'd be reluctant. Uh, so if you give them a gift card to receive packages, or if you spell out the environmental benefits, uh, oftentimes this is something that they're going to be happy to do. So the project itself involved trying to forecast uh, or predict what package delivery will look like. Uh, it also required to build a stochastic model of what the cost and how those things would um, uh, be impacted by offering incentives to, uh, to um, uh, consumers in terms of delaying. Uh, as I list, there are a bunch of problems up here. A CPG manufacturer wants to forecast, a B2B wants to try to build a skew level forecasting, a bank has a marketing problem, or a startup web company is trying to think about using text mining to um, improve their interviewing. All right, so very diverse set. Uh, again, I think these are fun to do. Uh, they're challenging and engaging uh, for the students, for the company. So I, I think this is that proverbial win-win. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Brad Ivan. I am the executive director of the MS and product management program. And I'm going to start today by answering the question, what exactly is an MS and product management anyway? Because it's a very unique program. It's, the, it's arguably the only of its type. And next slide, please, Andrew. Um, what we are, we're a hybrid. And we are a hybrid that's designed to provide the skills to professionals who wish to take that next step to become product managers in a very condensed, very focused manner. We're a hybrid between the Tepper School of Business and the School of Computer Science. And I, I, I like this, uh, this image as a metaphor because we're neither an apple nor an orange, but at the same time, we're both. Um, and basically, it's, it's as you might expect for product managers, it's important for them to understand the business skills, the technical skills, and the design skills necessary to, make their, to bring joy to their customers. And along the way, we have leadership wrapped and embedded in every, every course, every step of the way. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that a, a little bit more in a little bit. First, though, this program exists for two major reasons. Next slide, please, Andrew. The program exists for two major reasons. One reason is the students, those students who have been technical professionals and want to take their, take their careers to the next step, take, take that leap to product management. And the other is the subject of today's discussion, and that's industry. And within industry, this program, the basic origin of the program itself is to solve the problem of supply and demand in product management skill and talent. Everybody here who has been in the shoes of a product director or a situation where you've had to hire a PM, there are two kind of key quotes that I'm gonna base the discussion on and, and the value of the capstone project itself. Uh, next, next slide, please. Andrew. I'll give you a second to, to take a look at this quote. This is paraphrased from an actual quote with a, a sponsor who I've spoken with. We've been trying to fill this PM role for the past six months. Nobody has the right skills. And we know that these, this unique set of business acumen, design, and technical skill that is required to be a successful product manager, and especially the leadership, the, especially the influential leadership. It's tough to find. It's not out there. It's not readily available. And then the next key quote is, next slide, please, Andrew. This one I heard recently, and I think it applies to way too many people. We have a backlog of 200 product-related projects to tackle. Um, and that's where the capstone project comes in. So <laughs> um, th this is exactly the problem that we hope to solve. Actually, both of these. One is a longer term problem, that of recruiting and having a talent pipeline. And then the nearer term problem of we just have a massive project portfolio and let's do something about it. Let's, let's get some real value here with some real skilled PMs and training. Next slide, please, Andrew. Thank you. So the question is, uh, and I'll, this is where I talk a bit more about the students themselves and the program 
and what we teach and how they apply it. Next slide, please. So what do the students bring? You're, you're, you're considering a product management related project to be sponsored and to, to be worked on by our students. It's important to understand who our students are and they're a unique bunch themselves too, because in general and this year specifically, they have more than seven years experience on average. Most of them come from very successful technical careers and they're just ready to take that leap. They, they've, they've been there and done that as it relates to software development and, and different types of technical roles. And they look around and say, I'm ready to lead this team. And that's exactly what we're here to provide them with those skills to do. So a quick, quick slice, a very rough slice of, of who the, uh, the students are. About half of them have a computer science background, that type of a, a software engineering degree or something along, something very similar to that. About a quarter of them come from electrical engineering or mechanical engineering, bioengineering, different engineering disciplines. And the remaining quarter come from a, a, a miscellaneous uh, background, marketing, economics. Uh, almost all of them have some level of coding competence when they enter, or they all have some level of technical, um, technical uh, experience and, and uh, credentials. A lot of them enter this program already with graduate degrees. And th this kind of speaks to what we see in industry is companies don't really want to hire fresh, you know, zero experience product managers. They want somebody who's been around, who understands how organizational dynamics work, who understands business context and how things get done. And that's exactly this type of student that we have. And then by the time the capstone project starts, they all will at least have had hands-on experience at their internships. So all of these students have been in a PM role, been in a PM context by the time the capstone takes place. And then, of course, the, the, the blend of curriculum that we provide to them is technical, design, business, and they work almost across the board in teams and uh, leadership roles throughout. So next slide, please, Andrew. So the basic details, next, next slide. The basic details are very similar to what Alan presented earlier, where um, except that our capstone is, starts in the fall. So we act, our fall semester starts on August 30th, which means that right now is the time to reach out if you're interested in working with us or exploring a problem statement or even just understanding the, the mechanics of, of the program in better detail. So please do contact me if this is a, at all interesting to you. Um, the team structure for our program is it's typically three students per team plus an industry advisor. And that's the way that we expect it to go forward in this upcoming semester. And then very similar to the way that Alan presented, the sponsor's time is in providing information and receiving updates. So we have the kickoff meeting, we have weekly updates and we have a final presentation. In some cases, sponsors will be much more involved just because they, they choose to. In other cases, they're kind of hands off. They give the students leeway and they go discover information. And um, it, every project, the dynamics of every project and every sponsor are different in that manner. Next slide, please. So what do the projects look like? And this is, um, this is, in the case of our projects, because they are all product related and because they're a blend of these different types of skills, some are far more customer oriented, some are far more process oriented, some are far more design oriented, and some are far more data oriented. Um, there, there's a very wide variety of problem statements. That we one one. Okay, very wide variety. So um, from customer discovery where students are exploring new verticals for an existing product and interviewing, cold calling, interviewing um, potential users, understanding how those personas operate and what, what's important to them, to very open-ended projects. Like we had a, a, a sponsor in the transportation industry who said, we know that, that we know that our service will be affected by electronic vehicles, 
and reduce fuel dependency. We don't know exactly how we need you to study that for us. So it, it goes across the board. There's a lot of retail related work that we do as well. Next slide, please, Andrew. And here's just a snapshot of some of our more recent uh, employers in, in places where our interns are currently working. And then one more slide. And I have a link here just to call attention. I know that UPMC Enterprises is on our uh, attendee list here. Um, this is a success story on our blog. Please visit us and learn about how uh, Deb Sosmo turned his very successful capstone project into an also equally successful career. And he's still with them today. Good afternoon, everyone. So just as a little overview of our program, the Master of Human Computer Interaction Program, or a little bit easier, MHCI is the first and arguably one of the best programs of its kind. We were established in 1996. So here we are 25 years later, we have over 1000 alumni in leadership roles around the world. This is a one-year professional program that places a great emphasis on industry experience and trends. So as part of this focus, our students participate in an eight month long capstone project. So that's two semesters. Our cohort, which generally is around 65 students is broken. They are broken into teams of between four to six students. And then they're paired with an industry client as in other capstones you've heard about today, they are also supported by faculty members. Some of our past sponsors have included companies like NASA, Bloomberg, Amazon, Google, that's just a few and a really impressive list. These companies also take time to participate in other engagements with us that could include things like recruiting or in-class participation, um, guest critiques or portfolio reviews, bespoke educational workshops. Um, we love to let your imagination run with that one. We're open to explore. At the conclusion of our program, students take positions that could include um, product designers, user experience researchers, uh, interaction or service designers, user experience engineers. Those are just a few of the titles you might see our alum in. And with that very brief overview, I'll pass it over to my colleague, Skip, who will provide an overview of our pedagogy and also provide some previous project examples. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, well, first a word about the students and where they come from. They generally have a background uh, in undergraduate programs in computer science, design, cognitive psychology, behavioral sciences, social sciences, and about three years of employment experience. I would say we also have a set of students that don't really conform to any of this. And um, we've had here in the program, um, the World Scrabble Champion and the first seat uh, clarinet uh, player with the Denver Philharmonic. Um, during our program, the students learn theory methods and practices um, from design behavioral sciences. And the key here is that we apply them in nearly everything that we do. Um, in the design studio classes, the research classes and the technology classes they, they take, um, the theory is coupled with application in a real world problem. The reason we do this is because we want for our students to come here and fill the gaps that they have. A student may arrive with a particularly strong computer science background, but not know um, user interface design, or maybe they don't know research. Um, and so we're really filling gaps and helping them level up um, so that they are positioned to go back into practice as leaders, um, executing research, or interpretation of research, running research programs, doing sense making and working in a strategically significant capacity for their employers. Let's move forward. So here's a wide variety of the companies that employ our students. Um, you'll see some of the usual suspects here. UPMC Enterprises is here uh, locally, BCG Plantinium. Um, our employers are um, both product companies um, or platform companies, as well as uh, consultancies or agencies. So you'll see a wide uh, mix among those. The way that you become um, a sponsor of a capstone project is to work with Jessica and I to shape a project. Um, perhaps we can take a look at some of the projects that we've shaped for this year's portfolio that Jessica manages. I'm sorry, there we go. Uh, so this year we have NASA, CarMax, Interdigital, uh, Bloomberg, Optum, which is a uh, Optum Health, 99P Labs, which is Honda's Research of the Americas, um, uh, uh, cooperative uh, research program with 99P, 
um, Pacific Northwest National Laboratories out of the Pacific Northwest Seattle area, uh, pandemic professors, the Southwest Pennsylvania Partnership on the Aging, the Roberto Clemente Museum, one of my favorites here in Pittsburgh, um, uh, PA WIC, which is Women, Infants, and Children's Program. And we have ourselves as a client as well, the School of Computer Science grad program, which is 47 different graduate programs that uses an enterprise application um, to uh, administer the admissions process. Um, so let's take a quick look at what the process looks like for shaping up a project. Um, last year, if you can move forward, Andrew. Thank you, sir. We worked with uh, Amazon Music, and this is the project that we shaped. Everybody knows Amazon, um, particularly with their consumer services and their conversational agent, Alexa, which embodies the form factor of a tower or a little hockey puck type thing, as well as a couple others now that look like globes and whatnot, and is available on mobile devices like this. So our students were challenged by Amazon Music to figure out what happens when Alexa can break out of those embodiments or form factors and become part of the world around them. Um, what I'm about to show you is a concept design um, in the form of a movie that shows all the possible ways that data that is connected to users and individual users in particular can be used to influence their experience with music, thus creating new opportunities, new revenue streams, um, and new possible partnerships. So, Andrew? Introducing Alexa, your music companion. In 2025, your musical life is blended with your in real life experiences. And Alexa plays you the perfect song to match whatever you're doing. But music extends beyond just listening. Get in the moment recommendations for purchases that fulfill your musical lifestyle, like the hottest new LPs, or memorabilia that you'll cherish forever. But what about the places you go? Curate music for your favorite environments, like your go-to cafe. Feel self-reflective? Look into your music ID and share it with new or old musical friends. Okay, so we'll stop there for a second. Uh, what you're seeing is the students using the movie as a form of describing a future experience that involves sensing, both active and passive sensing, um, uh, telematics, um, uh, biometrics from the user's um, uh, persons and their uh, context, that is their location. Here we see the heartbeat of the user. So we're imagining ways in which a deployed service, Alexa, a conversational agent, and a marketing, market leading conversational agent at that can be used to create new experiences and thus new forms of revenue. What makes our program um, unique, I believe, is that we're situated in the School of Computer Science, surrounded by the Robotics Institute, uh, the machine learning folks, everybody else that's really um, digging down into narrow um, uh, uh, research topics. One such topic, uh, well, I would say that all of those faculty are available to our students. Um, I often use the metaphor of a buffet and ask our students to pretend like they've gone into a restaurant that has a buffet. Just go approach the research faculty. They're delighted to talk about their work and try to connect it to a real world application. That is unique for the MHCI program. Other programs are not typically situated that intimately um, next to uh, world renowned uh, research faculty With sensing. that are working in a variety of areas. So, oh, thanks, Andrew, sorry. So in this uh, next bit you're going to see is an example of us referring um, some of the students on the Amazon Music team to Chris Harrison, who runs um, the Future Interfaces Group, and in particular, a project called Wall Plus Plus, in which um, low cost materials are used to turn an ordinary wall, like a drywall wall, right? Um, into an interactive surface. And this is something that the Amazon Music team then referenced <clears throat> in the um, development of some of their prototypes uh, going forward. And Andrew, if you could. With, with sensing, interactivity, and computation. In this research, we describe a low cost and easily applied wall treatment that can transform any room into a rich sensor. Our wall treatment costs roughly $20 in materials per square meter. 
and can be applied without any specialty tools. After a wall is painted, it connects to our custom sensor board. We measure mutual capacitance between every row and column pairs, much like a smartphone touchscreen, which provides a matrix of values that allows a wall to sense the distance to capacitive objects, such as a user's hands or body. This immediately enables room-scale touch sensing opportunities, including hover tracking and even gesture sensing. Okay, so you can see how um, the research work that's being handled in uh, just one lab of many labs at the HCII could be referenced by the students for Amazon Music to make a connection between the digital world and the physical world, and in particular, the overlap between those, right? Imagine a van that overlaps. So that's the kind of project that we run here at the uh, uh, Master of Human Computer Interaction, and I'll turn it over to Jessica to conclude. Thanks so, so much, Skip, for showing us those examples. So we would be delighted to take any questions, to share more examples of previous projects or explore opportunities for your own project. Um, we are starting that process now, so don't hesitate to reach out to me at this uh, email listed on the screen. And there are some other websites listed where you can learn more about our program and also view past projects. So thanks for your time. I'll pass it back over to Andrew. Okay, so thanks to our guest, uh, guests. Alan, Brad, Skip, Jessica, I think we stuck the landing on this 2.30 ending. Um, I'm going to open up to questions soon. Uh, let me just kind of wrap up the presentation portion of today. Uh, so this is our last Enable event before taking a break for the summer. Um, but we're back next fall, so stay tuned. Uh, this series just resumes in September. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I encourage you to check out our website, right, uh, cmu.com edu slash enable spelled appropriately. Uh, you're going to find there what we're about and every recording of previous events, uh, what we've been doing, all the resources that we share around those. Uh, more importantly, as always, we'd love to hear from you. Even today's event was defined by you, right? Our community. Let us know what you're thinking about, what you're worried about, what you're focusing on related to AI retail services. Okay. Um, and finally, we encourage you to join as a sponsor. Um, this is ultimately the best way to get directly involved uh, in our community, right? This, uh, among the many benefits involves, uh, among the many benefits includes uh, in kind of defining these events, uh, kind of explicit guidance on, 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 on this, 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 this research, these research paths that we talked about today, uh, 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 recruitment, so on. And we have, uh, uh, I have, if you're looking bottom right on this slide, uh, you want to talk to Chris Kissel, right, at enable at cmu.edu. Okay, so again, thanks. And now we can, uh, uh, now we can and will uh, open the floor to questions to, to hopefully our, our guests here who are the experts. I'm going to take a second to pause and aggregate those questions and then uh, uh, we'll do that. But thank you for joining. Um, Excuse me, Andrew. Yeah, there's there's one in chat that perhaps uh, Skip and I can speak to. I, I think it's a really good question as related to what's the difference between an MSPM and an MHCI Excellent. project. Um, I, I'll start that, I suppose, by saying that some MSPM projects have a design element, but not all, not not by definition, and. Perhaps you might, one way to think about it, and Skip, you can confirm or add to this, is that the MHCI students are de design experts. The MSPM students are kind of more generalists who are looking for the business outcome related to the design. Um, mm -hmm. So there may be more metrics or business models or uh, viability studies related to an MSPM project where it's not just, uh, not just design, but it's not design at the core. It's design as part of a, a broader scope of a project. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, an MHCI project has as a requirement, an academic requirement for the program, um, the students must conduct the full life cycle of um, human computer interaction methods from research to concept design, um, to detailed design, to prototyping, testing, validation, uh, rinse and repeat and figure out how to do that at a rhythm that would match industry. 
Um, another distinction I think that you'll find between MSPM and MHCI is that MHCI teams are, um, we assemble five student teams, um, taking the data that we've collected from their admissions process and all of their academic work while they're at CMU and before, as well as other inputs from their faculty and finally inputs from them to assemble um, uh, five student teams that are interdisciplinary in nature so that we optimize the amount of learning between peers on the team and between the 12 to 13 capstone teams in the cohort that year. Um, and so I, my sense is, I also teach MSPM students, and my sense is that they're often embedded, um, you know, with, are working with um, uh, their, the, the sponsor and our teams um, uh, have a slightly different academic program and we, we must give them interdisciplinary uh, setting in which to execute that program. Yeah, and, and Skip, just to add to that, one of, one of the reasons I like that question so much is that there there is some overlap and there's opportunity for overlap and there's op opportunity for continuation from one program, a focus from one program to a focus from the next program. So perhaps an MSPM project team will study whether there's a market for a particular project or product and then MACIs could take it from there and understand the users, design the thing, prototype it. I agree. Likewise, I think there's a chance for us to work with Alan's uh, program. And mm -hmm. um, as data is becoming, as some say, the <clears throat> the oil of our economy, um, it is something that we are all we increasingly deal with in the HCII and are focused on teaching students how to design with data. And uh, that might be a kind of a currency that connects um, projects from the same sponsor between programs. We did have an example in the uh, MSBA program where we uh, co-sponsored um, a project with the uh, uh, MBA program. Uh, so there are lots of uh, potential interactions. So if you see um, a problem that really crosses bounds, I I'm sure we're happy to try to tackle it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the subject that I wanted to bring up is the, the and I'm going to, this, this, this came up because, you know, you, you can imagine we, 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 we got together before this presentation, uh, is this notion of a, of a serial, serial capstone, right, kind of connecting them in the right way that, um, you know, I had like mentioned renewal earlier, which meant that you kind of, you do a capstone, you repeat with the same program, but it, it feels like given the massive landscape of programs here, there's actually, there's, there's ideally a way that we can kind of connect these all, right? That one project can kind of uh, lead into another. Uh, so the one kind of, uh, the only challenging question that I think I'll pose to, the, the, to our, our guests here is, is, is there a path forward to that uh, kind of, you know, in, in, in the near future, right? In, in, that, in that event, the, the serial project idea. I would say for the group that we're all open to exploring that and think that's very exciting. Um, we we work on the same campus, but we you know continue to look for ways that we can work together. So we can always jump on a group meeting with um, an industry partner and talk through how that how that could look. Yeah, I, I would say as an example, um, one of the uh, projects that um, has uh, such a possibility um, moving forward was with the modernization project at the Pittsburgh International Airport. Last year, uh, they sponsored a project for our students to use queuing theory um, and apply it to managing the uh, user experience and particularly the anxiety you feel while you're waiting in various queues uh, from the commute to your home uh, to your seat on the plane. Um, that project looks like it's going to continue to have a path forward and uh, another master's program here at CMU, um, the Master of Software Engineering program in the Institute of Software Research has now gotten involved with discussions um, around uh, um, using um, that subject for their uh, software engineering master capstone project. So to summarize, it sounds like the, the, the connections are, are kind of starting to form. So that's, 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 that there's an opportunity there, I would say, 
right? Where if you can draw the the kind of longer connections, uh, uh, you're you're really you you being the the company, right? Are kind of really using our resources to to their highest advantage. Um, I think kind of wrapping up uh, in terms of a uh, uh, theme of today, uh, the, I want to pose a question to all of our speakers, and I'll propose that we just go in the order, um, uh, uh, the original order that we went through. Um, do you have any advice, right? Ultimately, this is about advice in terms of engaging in capstones. Do you have any advice in terms of avoiding potential or common failure points, right? This is, this is uh, uh, maybe a half challenge question here, but, you know, occasionally challenges arise in the middle of a project. Um, you know, what are those and how can those be avoided? And again, we'll, we'll kind of go uh, in the order of presentation. So Alan, uh, who starts off? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to just pick one, uh, which is I would avoid projects that are in the critical path. Now, you might think the critical path is a great place to be because that should be the projects that people care the most about. Uh, but that's also the place where it causes a lot of conflict because there is so many demands on the sponsor side. And uh, oftentimes, you know exactly what it is that you want done. Uh, so it's not the best type of project uh, because it doesn't give this team some latitude and some creativity. And the uh, timeline is uh, several months, which is enough to complete a substantive amount of work. Uh, but sometimes the critical path projects are ones that are going to demand man years instead of man weeks. So uh, I, I, I think that's one that I would try to stay away from. Thanks, Alan. So it gets to kind of the, these are, you know, expect open-ended solutions. Don't kind of throw that into your, your kind of closed-ended uh, point of a, of a project. Uh, Brad? That's tricky. Um, I, I think uh, I think what I've seen in nearly every project that I've been personally involved with uh, is the readiness and the willingness to pivot as the students gather data and present it back to you. Um, the, and, and maybe this is, uh, this is, in, in alignment with Alan's answer is to not overprescribe, to keep it somewhat open-ended and, and willing to move with where the data takes you because we've seen that it's, 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 it's a great surprise when students bring back information that you didn't even know existed and now it's time to pivot. So um, I, I think more often than not, we see the end deliverable be somewhat different than the initial kickoff expectation but in a good way. I like it. So again, the theme is again exploration, open-endedness, and the the one or a few projects that I advise, but that same flavor. Right? It went in a different direction than kind of the, the 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 company had expected, and you view that as a plus. I think I hope. Um, Skip and Jessica, can wrap this up. I'll go ahead, Jessica. Yeah. Thanks, Skip. I would say along those same lines, um, there has to be a balance with how much confidential information is provided to give students that room to explore. Um, the students will keep confidential information as such, but they need to be able to talk about an adequate amount of information um, in a public setting and also include it in their portfolio because it's a learning experience. Um, and then I would completely agree with what, what Brad has, has said too. Skip, I'll pass it over to you for any add-ons there. Yeah, I would just say um, I encourage you to work with Jessica and Chris um, because they know the university um, quite well and they know when things are happening. And oftentimes there's a chance to attend a capstone presentation uh, because the sponsor would be okay with another company attending that can give you a sense of how, um, how your experience um, may, may play out. I also encourage you to shape the project descriptions um, you know, with us. And I think above all, um, be a client. Um, we've got the, we've got the, um, the faculty and learning end covered. Um, it's kind of like what Alan said before when he emphasized uh, the role uh, or the importance of uh, business domain expertise, um, uh, being a component of the students learning. That's really what we need for sponsors to supply. You guys are experts in your businesses. Um, and the faster that we can um, absorb that expertise, in particular, the faster the students can, um, the more time they have to, you know, um, research designed prototype test and repeat. 
um, so you can get lots more iterations out of them. I guess the, the perfect way to, to, to wrap this up. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Um, so, okay, uh, uh, the folks in the audience, uh, thank you all for, for, for coming. And this is our last uh, uh, talk of the series, and we'll resume uh, this fall. Uh, thank you again to our speakers, Alan, Brad, Skip, Jessica, the busy folks. I uh, really appreciate uh, you joining us for, for, for this hour and a half today. Uh, and then finally, thank you to everyone that helped put on this event. Uh, Kenny Blair, Laura Alfred, as always, uh, you're the best. Chris Kissel, who's frankly co-lead of, of, of Enable, uh, and our, our, our sponsor, uh, Zendix. Um, so thanks, everyone. Uh, all the best. Stay safe.